Good morning, Warriors of Wolfnet. This is Coach from the Wolfnet Radio Podcast coming to you live today with another Alpha Strike List Builder Series. Today we're going to be talking about my Russell Hog Dominion uh, 350 list that we played last Thursday um, on Thursday Night Throwdown. And we did something a little different this time. We did an aerospace test. So we tested out some aerospace on the 350 format, which is new. Um, it's not a part of the rules. We were just, hey, let's see how it feels. Because personally, I have never played aerospace uh, in Alpha Strike. So I wanted to kind of give it a go. Um, I've always thought that the rules at the back of the book are a little, um, a little too much. But, you know, how... I needed to see for myself. So what we did was uh, we did a regular 350 uh, domination match. And um, uh, Matt and I played against each other. Uh, turns out we went bears versus bears. So <laughs> um, we decided to go ahead and give it a shot. And uh, we each added a aerospace unit to our list. So let's uh, just get right into it first of all. Uh, first things we always do is we go to rules, introductory, standard, and advanced, types, battle mech, combat vehicle, aerospace, and infantry. So that's a new one. We're, we're highlighting that. And uh, factions. We're going Russell Hog. Russell Hog Dominion. And that comes with... Inner Sphere Clan General. Availability area we played in the Dark Age era. So lots of stuff available to us. Just gonna go ahead and filter that. Now, as always, I have my list right here with me. And we'll be building our full 350 list. Now, to start off, we always have to add a Kodiak. Have to have a Kodiak. If you're playing bears. Sorry, it's the only way to go. Got to play Kodiak. So today I went with a Kodiak 4. Um, it's, I mean, what can you say? It's a beast. Uh, <laughs> it's an assault mech. Moves 8 inches. Uh, it's an 884 uh, stat line, so it throws a lot of damage. Has a lot of armor. Um, the other nice thing is this thing comes with... Um, this thing comes with uh, flak one one dash, so flak at one one. Now, because we're playing aerospace, it's kind of nice to have flak. Flak lets you hit with that dice at a negative two or a margin of two error. So um, when you're rolling your eight sets of dice and you take out one. You designate one set as this is my flak set, and you roll it, and say you needed a 10 to hit. Well, that, if that flak set hits 8, that means you still hit with that one damage at medium or short to medium range. So that's how we did this. Um, I don't know. I just I just love the, first of all, the model is awesome. The, the new model for the Kodiak is probably one of the best models out there right now. Um, it's just fantastic. So, um, had a, uh, had a Kodiak and of course I skilled him down to skill three and, uh, he gets the 71 points. It's a lot, but a skill three unit shooting eight damage at medium range is, is really awesome. I, I recommend it. Um, the skill three, uh, when you when you have a heavy hitter like that, I, I re definitely recommend uh, going with that. Uh, next up on the list, I have a King Fisher, and I went with the F variant. Now the F variant, as you can see, another very good mech, very heavy hitter, um, has a six five three uh, stat line which is great. Uh, you can't, can't go wrong with that stat line. It's got a lot of armor. So it's got nine armor, seven structure. That's also 
comes in very handy. And the other thing you might notice is this one has flak 222. <clears throat> so I would designate two sets of dice that are my flak dice. Now I kept him at a skill four just because it gets a little heavy once I get towards the back end of this and, and you'll see why. But um, still a skill four. <clears throat> Now the, another nice thing about the Cody Kingfisher F is it's got an ECM, so that comes in really handy when you have um, C3I running around or C3 running around. Um, also, when it comes to NARC, um, NARC also takes or ECM also takes care of NARC, so that's also another nice thing. Uh, let's see. Next up on the list, I have a Vulture. Vulture E. I went with. Now, the nice thing you can see about the Vulture E right off the bat is, guess what? Guess what it is? You're right. It's the Flak 333. <laughs> um, now, we didn't exactly, we had previous knowledge when we were making our list that we were going to be using aerospace. So, we knew each of us were going to have aerospace on our list. Um, I didn't go as heavy flak as Matt did, but I still wanted to have some flak. It's always a good thing to have flak in your 350 list. Um, you never know when you're going to see VTOLs flying around. Um, those things can be pesky. So flak always helps with airborne units. So when you have a flak, uh, like I said, it, it's a, it's a margin of two error or not error, margin of two of a miss. Um. So that's that's just really nice uh, to have. Uh, he's also he's a decent mech, three 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 all the way through. I also skilled him down to a skill three. Um, I kind of went with if I've got flak. He's he's the vulture. E is the one I'm going to put in my list probably all the time, um, just because he has that flak capability, and he's not he's not very expensive. He's forty points at skill three. So, it's it's not a big detriment to me to to have him in my in my list. His his benefit outweighs not having him in there. So if I'll always probably have him in my list. Um, plus he moves ten inches, so that's pretty good for a, a, a heavy mech. Uh, moving on down the line, we have a Fire Falcon. The old Fire Falcon T is what I went with. Oop, that one. Fire Falcon T. Now, this guy is expensive. <laughs> um, and for two, for two reasons. Um, one, his damage output is incredible for a, a light mech. It's five damage at short and four damage at medium. Uh, that's a lot of damage for a light mech. And he moves 20 inches. <laughs> so um, you combine those two things, that's, that's a pretty awesome uh, combination to have if he can survive. Now, I know I took a huge risk taking this guy, um, especially in an aerospace game when, I mean, aerospace can come out of nowhere and just dump four or five damage on you uh just like that now i was hoping <clears throat> you'll you'll see with the next mech that i chose that i kind of have two targets that i want him to go for this one and uh the next mech that i have in my list but for the ability to move 20 inches and to do some serious damage uh, one of his main roles is to get behind enemy lines and then i'm shooting at short range behind you so I add a, a set of D 2d6 to my short range damage and now I'm doing six damage in the rear um, that's that's uh, very dangerous and if I can get that to happen well then the rest of my force that's coming up the field it you know the my forces my opponent to have to choose am I turning around or, or I'm putting the the this is my offensive uh capabilities on on my opponent to turn defensive and if i can do that then i think i win a small battle and uh that should help me out so 
Fire Falcon T, uh, it's a lot. And to go along with that Fire Falcon, we have to throw in a Dasher. And if you're going to throw in a Dasher, you should probably throw in a Dasher H. Now, the Dasher H, same thing with the Fire Falcon, is the fact that, one, he moves 26 inches. And that's a lot. And that's what dashers do. They just go really fast. Um, the other thing is, there again, five damage at short range. And one overheat. He has one armor, one structure. It's not much. You breathe on him wrong, he's going to go down. But at 26 inches, he can move a long ways. Especially if you sprint. When you sprint, you take half of your movement and then add it to your movement. So he's moving 38 inches, uh, 39 inches, sorry, when he sprints. That's the whole map. So he can get to an area immediately. Now, he can't shoot because you sprinted, but he can get there. And that's another one of those things where I, I go offensive and I, and I push my two units that can move really fast all the way down the board and force my opponent to have to you know, have to shoot at these guys, which is, it's hard to shoot at them. They're Team M4, I usually put them in cover or some sort of partial cover. Um, and I try to keep them at medium range, so that's 4, plus 1, plus 2. So you're looking at a 7 plus your skill uh, automatically. So it's really hard to hit these guys. And that's what I like to do is is use these two, the Fire Falcon and the Dasher, to, to push um, my opponent into doing something he wasn't planning on doing. So, that was the idea there. Now, I know I'm getting to the good good guy, but we got to round out this list with some elementals. Um, I went with the uh, elemental... Oop, not working here. I went with the elemental... Battle Armor Space Squad 5. Uh, Flamers. Where are you at? Right there. There's 17 points. Um, 6J. 1 damage at short range. And they do 1 heat at short range. Um, I know that there are... Oh, how do you say this? Better... <clears throat> better battle armor out there but for the price point i wanted i wanted something cheap i wanted something that in short range can do heat uh that's kind of a, a special ability that puts heat on a mech and then forces them to either shoot or not shoot or take the heat the heat degrees decreases your movement and it adds a plus one for that mech to shoot next round or that unit to shoot next round. They're just kind of a harasser kind of a thing. And for 17 points, um, <clears throat> you know, for bunkers, for other things, um, they're great to pair them up with the, the, um, uh, with the Dasher and the Fire Falcon. They're both Omni. So they, these elementals can ride on there. Um, they're just good for just an overall harassing role, um, in, on the battlefield. So, uh, that's why I chose those. So let's get to the big, the big guy. The reason we're all here. Uh, <laughs> I always forget how to spell this guy. So the Kyrgyz D. Now this guy is a big boy. When it comes to aerospace units, I decided to kind of push the limit or or you know go big or go home basically with when it came to my aerospace selections now in this game we rule of two aerospace so uh neither opponent could have more than two aerospace fighters um this experimental rules was they could have the same chassis but if we were going to go forward with it uh, we would not do that. It would have to be a different chassis, but you could have uh, a different variant, but you could have the same chassis. Um, 
So just to, to briefly run down aerospace. So at the top is your, your THR, that's your thrust. Your thrust is what allows you to move sideways on the board after you've already exited. It means you can move up or down that many inches for the next turnaround. Um, skill is skill, and obviously, um, because I wanted to really maximize my damage potential, I skill threed my Kyrgyz. So he's at a skill three, which puts him at a whopping 86 points. I know, it's a lot. And it was a lot. Um, the first thing that jumps off is his damage profile. 13 damage at short range, 10 damage at medium range. Uh, six, and then we did not play extended range just because our map size is already small enough. We don't really need it. Uh, he has two overheat, so if I really needed to, I could push his short range damage up to 15 damage. That's, believe me, if you watch the video, that's a lot of dice. It's a, it is a full handful of dice. Um, has a lot of armor, has decent structure. The TH that you see in the corner there, that is an aerospace's threshold. Now a threshold is any time you take three or more damage from one source, you will roll a critical hit. So this is where this, the squishiness comes in on aerospace, is any time they get dealt three damage in, from one source, from one mech or one you know, aerospace unit or whatever shooting at it, uh, you'll roll a critical hit. Now, the critical hit table for vehicles and aerospace is 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 nice because six, seven, and eight is no criticals. But <laughs> I could tell you from the game we had the other night, uh, I think I had my threshold broken three or four times. Now, three of those of critical hit rolls were no criticals, so that was beneficial to me. But I did take an engine hit. I did take a weapon hit. Uh, it was rough. Um, I did. Um, I bas he basically lasted two rounds for me, which, which was okay. Um, I was, I I could have had him last a lot longer, but I I kind of wanted to. I had an opportunity first off to strafe, which means that you take your short range damage, you divide it by two and round down. And whatever is in a 2-inch by 10-inch template that you lay on the battlefield that is along your flight path, you roll uh, that number of dice for each unit along that path. So I can deal 6 damage per unit in that template area. So I had a Marauder 2C and a Vulture uh, that I strafed and did. I think I did 4 damage to the Marauder 2C and... Four or five damage to the vulture, so it was a successful strafing run. It was, it, I I took it. Um, had a natural twelve, I think, and I think I ended up putting an engine hit on the uh, on the Marauder two C. So that that helped out a lot. Um, <clears throat> for the specials, it has a bomb three. That means you carry three bombs if you want. You have to just declare at the beginning of the the game if you if you're carrying bombs. And what kind of bombs you're carrying. You you have an option of uh, high explosives, which is a 2-inch template, 2 damage. Uh, you have cluster bombs, which is a 6-inch template, 1 damage uh, to everything in that template. <clears throat> and then you have um, inferno bombs, which is a 2-inch template and does 2 heat to anything in that template. I decided to go with just high explosives. I wasn't going to be doing bombing anyway, which I probably should have said I wasn't. I didn't bring bombs in the first place, but this is our first time playing aerospace, so we wanted to see how it worked out. Um, Matt, on the other hand, took one bomb of each, uh, and he did a lot of bombing, so that was very effective for him. Um, when you're carrying bombs, you minus one thrust for every bomb, so... When I started the game out, I only had two thrusts, so it was five minus three. It's two thrusts. So I could technically only move two inches along the edge of the map um, when I made my turnaround and came back. Um, the VSTOL, I believe that is for landing. It means I have a shorter runway for landing. 
But uh, the rest of that I, I didn't really use. I, I do have a rear 1-1, one, one, but uh, neither one of us tried to tail each other and do aerospace to air, air to air combat. Um, on my turnaround, I did limp myself uh, back. I took some heavy damage on the first turn, turned back, um, and Matt had a uh, hovercraft on the middle, the middle uh, objective area template that I needed to be gone because it was a fast mover. So I lined him up and just did a single strike. Now a strike uh, attack with an aerospace is basically what you think it is. Uh, I can be at low to medium altitude. And uh, I just figured I'm at low altitude and might as well get the best shot I can. Low altitude for aerospace shooting is like short range. It's a plus zero. Medium altitude or middle altitude is like medium range. It's a plus two. And then high altitude is like long range. Uh, it's a plus three, I believe. Three or four. Now that's aerospace shooting to ground units. Ground units shooting to aerospace units have to add six inches for low, 12 inches for middle, and... Um, I believe 24 inches for high to uh, 30 inches for high sorry so you add that that distance to the distance that it is from the ground unit to the flight path the shortest distance to the flight path so you have to add the horizontal and the vertical for aerospace and it it's a lot aerospace rules are a lot uh, there was a lot of book time. We kind of ended up just forgetting about the clock and just making sure that we could get the rules right and all this other stuff. Um, it, it There's a lot to add when you add aerospace to your game. It was fun. Uh, had a good time. Um, kind of came away with the, the overall feeling that for an Alpha Strike 350 game, you know, those games are more of a, of a skirmish between units um probably not the area that you would see aerospace dedicated to a small little skirmish or a small little battle like that um it it, it felt out of place and it was almost too much right so if i took an 86 point aerospace unit you can take two really cheap you know aerospace units with three bombs each and end up just bombing the whole place where it just doesn't feel right in a small skirmish uh, battle arena kind of a thing. So um, whether aerospace is going to be involved in um, whether aerospace is going to be involved in 350 in the future, I don't know. We just wanted to test it, have fun, see what it was like. Um, I don't know. We're we're discussing it, and we're just we're just having fun with this one. Now, uh, this Thursday coming up, we are doing the epic uh, version of our uh, sort of rule set. So that is a much larger map. That's going to be a four by six map, and it's six hundred PV per side. Um, so we're going to be testing those rules out on stream this Thursday. Uh, so I definitely recommend you. Hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, the ding, the bell, whatever it's called. Um, so you're notified when we go live Thursday because that will be a lot of fun. That's going to be um, that's going to be interesting. Now, this Thursday, we're not using aerospace just because we don't want to play test too many things at once. Um, but I can guarantee you that going forward, we probably will play test Epic with aerospace and see how it works. Um, but yeah overall it was a lot of fun uh aerospace if you can get the rules right you know get your head out of the book and you know the rules or, or somebody knows the rules for you or whatever they are a lot of fun uh they do a lot of damage they there's really no hiding um your dashers and your fire Fal fire falcons um and your light mechs uh are not gonna like aerospace very much they are squishy they do go down but um yeah it's it's a new facet to to the wide range of of units you can take in alpha strike so 
Uh, I definitely encourage you to pick up the book, uh, read the rules, give it a shot. I will say playing it made the rules a little more clear for me. So definitely just go play it. That's the best way to learn a game is to go just put, put two hours aside and go grab a buddy and put the miniatures on the board and just play it out and see how you like it. So other than that, this is another Alpha Strike List Builder series with Coach from Wolfnet Radio. And I uh, hope you guys all have a good day and we'll see you next week. Mm-hmm.